what to do when you are stuck. Dots, Richard. I know exactly how it feels like to be stuck. Having built successful and separate careers from scratch as an entrepreneur, consultant, and author, my livelihood depended on me coming up with a constant stream of ideas to help my clients. These clients pay me based on these ideas I generate for them, which they in turn use to improve their business situations solve their problems in life and help them make more money. So you can imagine that losing the very ability to generate these ideas was my greatest nightmare. If I don't come up with ideas, I don't get paid. And one day in 2005, this very thing I feared most happened. Bit by bit, I had allowed myself to get insane stuck. This went on for about two years and was one of the darkest periods of my life. During that time, my productivity plunged to a new low. I didn't have any good ideas yes, not a single good one, and whatever ideas I thought were assable quickly fizzled out when I started working on them. My work and income suffered. I became a total worrying wreck, not sleeping or eating well. It was truly one of the most miserable periods of my life. I had used my own creative powers against myself to perpetuate the illusion of stuckness, to know that I am capable of so much more and then looking at the circumstances in my life back then just made me plunge even lower into the abyss. So trust me, when I say I absolutely know how it feels, I am serious, and the aim of this book is to help you. This is not going to be a long book. The last thing you want to do when you are stuck is to be reading more and more books, trying to get D's. That is one of the excuses you are using to stay stuck. You already have all the ideas you need, and you absolutely do not need any more. This statement may seem ironic to you right now as you are reading it, but by the time you finish this short book, you will realize it to be all true. Back in 2005 when I was in the deepest rut of my life, it appeared that I had run out of ideas. It appeared that everything that I wanted to produce in my life, all the great work and ideas I once had in my life had already been used up. But guess what? On a certain deeper level, I had allowed myself to be stuck. I had allowed myself to remain stuck. And I was digging a deeper and deeper hole for myself every single day by reading more, analyzing more, and procrastinating more. Unbeknownst to myself, I was making clever excuses to stay more stuck. The first step to getting out of the stuck rut is to realize that you already have everything you need within you to produce great work. You don't have to go out there to earth for any more new ideas. Whatever you have, you already need. You have the tools and capabilities to create whatever you want, starting right now. Give up the belief that what you need to do great work is somewhere outside of yourself. Stop seeking. Stop looking to external sources for ideas. These ideas can only be found within you. But you have allowed this ability to be dampened and hidden under layers and layers of inaction. The worst thing you can do when you are stuck is to look at the work other people in your industry is doing. Because that will only make you feel more discouraged. Don't make the mistake I did and start reading what other people in your same industry are doing. Instead of giving you more ideas, it will make you feel worse as you realize how unproductive you have allowed yourself to become. By becoming aware of this gap and gulf between where you are and where you want to be personified by your colleagues. You are only making it harder for yourself to start. So put all those idea books away. When I was stuck I read many books about getting unstuck. Guess what? None of them helped me because none of them had taken the approach that I using with this book. Each of those books were written under the assumption that a person who is stuck has run out of D's or is not rated enough. Therefore all of those books were about how to generate ideas or about quirky ways to be rated. Guess what? When you are stuck and have been stuck for some time, it is difficult to be creative all of a sudden. The more you try to be creative, the more effort you put into coming up with ideas, the more you are working against the momentum that you have created for yourself. Instead, the right way is to use some trickery and use a light touch. Think back to a time when you learned driving. I learned driving on a manual stick shift vehicle, and here is one thing I never forgotten which illustrates this principle beautifully. If you step on the clutch when the vehicle is moving slowly, the vehicle will move even slower. But if you step on the clutch when the vehicle is moving quickly, the vehicle will move even faster. It will coast and ride on its existing momentum. The exact same thing happens in our lives. When you are stuck, you are moving slowly, and stepping on the clutch trying to make yourself coast faster will only work against yourself. But when you are on a whirl, when you are at the top of the world, Nothing seems to be able to stop you. You are unstoppable. So you have to know when to use the momentum to your advantage, and when to stop using backward momentum inertia to your disadvantage. Getting unstuck is not a matter of learning more or getting more you ideas. You need none of those. Getting unstuck is first and foremost, 
recognizing that at the deepest level, you have allowed yourself to be stuck, just as I allowed myself to be stuck back in 2005. If you attribute your state to some external circumstances or events, for example the economy, the loss of a client, or some other external condition no matter how valid it may seem then you are perpetuating that stuckness. You are giving yourself reasons why it is so, and why it has reason to continue. Therefore what I want you to do now is to stop analyzing. Stop trying to figure out how you got into the state. All that is not important. The past is not important. There is no ask you can get out of your chair at this moment and walk into. There is only the resent and the now moment. And of course, there is the future which is the series of nows you are walking into. So stop trying to figure out how you got here, or how you got into this S. Whatever you got yourself into, you can get yourself out of just as easily. Getting unstuck is an experiential process. It is about choosing your mental thoughts and sometimes your physical body to move that stuck energy. Therefore in each chapter of this book, I'll lead you through a series of steps that will help you move and release the tuck energy. Remember that in truth, Energy is always flowing and there is no way you can possibly get tuck. Think about the air in your room, it is always flowing and moving there is no way this air can get tuck even though of course, it may be wrapped in your room. Even if you trap air in a balloon or airtight bottle, the air molecules are constantly moving and bumping into each other. In fact, a law of physics called the Brownian motion states that these particles are constantly moving and bumping into each other in a totally random way. There is no way to predict how these particles will move, and how they will collide with each other. There is no way even to predict in advance the path of each separate particle, because the path of each particle depends on whether and how it gets hit by another particle and so on. Think of your world as something similar. Right now, you are living in an endless field of possibilities and ideas. Out of this totally random field, certain patterns or meaningful structures are possible. But how do you form these meaningful structures? How do they happen? Guess what you make them happen? You decide how you want to organize these random particles in your own life to make up something meaningful. It may be an idea at work. It may be an idea for a client. It may be something you need to do a new project perhaps to get the money flowing in. It may be a new money-making idea. It may be a new relationship idea. The particles are already there, now you just have to organize them and fill in the details. How you fill them in is up to you. Maybe the first jab in this book will jolt you out of your stuckness and give you the momentum needed to get going. If so, you can then step on your clutch and ride on this momentum. Maybe it will not happen until receiving the final jab in this book. But whatever it may be, that part of the fun of the process and I hope that when you are on the other side of things, when you are looking back at this time when things appeared to be stuck you can then smile and say, had was fun, let do it again. Art of the fun in your life is getting yourself into a rut and then getting yourself out of it. Richard Dots Jab number one, what would you do? Many years ago in one of those personal development workshops, a man was asked what he really wanted to do in life. No matter how hard he tried, he could not seem to come up with an answer. Without realizing it, he had conditioned himself into certain habitual ways of thought. He had trained himself to look at a certain set of possibilities in his life, and function based on them. Notice that when you are stuck, that is what you have inadvertently done. You have constrained yourself into looking at a very narrow field of possibilities, at a certain subset of things, whereas everything outside of that subset still exists and is there for you, the moment you call upon it. After much prodding, the trainer asked, Hat would you do if you knew what you wanted to do? And with that, he gave the most eloquent answer possible. What would you do if you knew what to do? What would you write if you knew what to write? What would you create if you knew what to create? What would you work on if in this very moment, you knew exactly what to do? Tailor this question to your particular situation right now. What would you do if you knew? Take a deep breath. Then sit for a moment and feel the answer come to you. The answer will come to you instantaneously, and there is absolutely no delay or lag. When I just finished my last book and wanted to write this book, I asked, what would I write if I knew what to write? That how the idea for this book came into being, and guess what, I am now acting on it. The key here is not to be pretentious, and not to think too much about it. Do away with the thinking. If thinking or analyzing can solve your issues, they would already have got you out of this rut long ago. What you need now is for your inner guidance to surface which you perhaps have rejected or hidden many times in the past. The first answer is usually the most truthful. Allow the answer to come to you without censoring or forcing, and then go do that. Jab number two, plus or minus. I credit this idea to Jim Hardy, 
the great golf instructor who frequently appears on the Golf Channel. Now I am not a big fan of golf, but I happened to tune in at exactly the right time to hear Jim mention this concept which he has applied to the golf swing. Hear the idea. Jim Hardy says that no matter who you are you may be a professional, or total amateur, there is always no exceptions one thing you can ADD or remove from your golf swing to instantly make it better. Here is it again, ref asked for our situation, no matter who you are, or where you are at right now, there is always one thing you can easily add or remove from your life to instantly improve your situation. What a beautiful concept. The first time I heard it. I was awestruck. Here was one of the greatest golf instructors in history, who not only understood golf, but also understood life. The same appears to any business or personal situation you may be in. No matter what level of performance you are getting, or what results you are currently achieving, there is always one thing you can easily add or remove from the mix of things you e currently doing to instantly improve the situation. I have tried this in my life, and sometimes that one simple change I took five minutes to make actually doubled or tripled my effectiveness, income, sales, profits or results. Take a look at the situation which you perceive is tuck right now. Remember, everything is simply a matter of perception. Next, I want you to find one thing you can easily add or remove from what you are doing that if done can instantly improve the situation. But I do not want you to go out on a limb here. This should not be hard work or extra effort. This must be something you can easily put into action. This must be something you can very easily do that will take almost no effort on your part. It may be making a phone call and asking someone a question, it may be changing some text on your website, it may be changing the price of your product or adding an offer, but it must be something which you can easily put into practice. It can also be something you can apply immediately to your life right now. Can you stay up later for half an hour starting tonight? and start working on your new project? Can you start writing a to-do list this very moment? Can you put some of your thoughts on paper this very minute? Whatever you choose to do, it has to be something that you can easily ADD or remove from your life. If it does not feel AC for you, don't do it. Sometimes it is not a matter of doing more, but removing. Once again, I really love this idea. I think it is brilliant. So many of us are focused on what can we do next and that is often why people get stuck. They suffer from action paralysis. Too much action is causing them to run around in circles with no clear sense of direction. If that the case, is there something in our lives we have to cut out? Is there something we have to remove? I call this a gate of action. If you remove something that is unproductive from your life right now and do it easily, you are creating a void for that space to be filled with something meaningful. And don't worry about what you are going to replace that activity with. Create the void first and it will be filled. Are you stuck because you are spending too much time surfing the internet, or talking to others about your ideas? Are you stuck because you spend too much time doing a particular thing and never end up getting started? Remove that from your life. Stop doing it and watch it get filled with something else. Remember, you don't have to see the whole staircase. I'm not asking you to see the whole project completed, and you at the end stage. I'm sure Jim Hardy is and asking all his students to see the whole swing. He knows the psychology of the game. He is merely asking his students to see the next step and do it. What will happen if you take five minutes right now to identify something you can immediately add or remove from your life? First, you start moving and once you are moving, you create momentum by doing something, no matter how small. You have defeated inertia and all that paralysis. Second, that very something which you do even if it only takes you five minutes, and even if it seems so natural to you, may produce massive results. When you put this principle into action, you are leverage what many call the Pareto Principle, in that 20% of your actions generate 80% of the results in your life and 80% of your actions generate 20% of your results. Of course the ratio ISN always 80-20 inches most cases, but what you are now doing is gaining great leverage. You are doing something that takes little effort on your part to get going, but produces great leverage and results. Identify that one thing and do it right now. And if you e having trouble identifying that one thing, Ask yourself from the previous chapter what is this one thing I can easily do or stop doing right now if I knew what to do? Jab number three, are you waiting for signs or signals? Much of the reason why I was stuck way back in 2005 was because I was constantly looking out for signs and signals from the universe. I wanted a guarantee before I acted. I wanted someone or something else to tell me that I would be a success or have a success I wanted. This became a recipe for failure. Back then. I had learned that life gives us signs, 
and so I didn't want to act before receiving clear guidance on what to do. So I waited and no guidance came and that waiting game stretched on for two long years. If it is true that life gives us signs then why didn't life give me a sign back then? Why WAS and the universe nudging me? Why didn't something happen to tell me what to do? Why WAS and I guided? Here's something that might shock you. I if you are waiting to be guided, to be told what to do. You are asking for nothing to happen. Please read and reread that sentence over and over again. When the great author Somerset Maugham was asked whether he wrote only when inspiration struck, he said, write only when inspiration strikes. And the next line is the kicker. Fortunately, it strikes every morning at 9 o'clock sharp. Somerset Maugham became one of the highest paid writers of his generation. When you look at what writing is, it is nothing more than the creation and selling of ideas for entertainment and education. It is the same in your life and profession too, no matter what line of work you may be involved in. You are always paid based on your ability to come up with ideas that work. The better your ideas and solutions, the more in demand you will be, and the better you will be remunerated. Don't make the mistake of thinking that some external source is going to give you an idea that will fall in your lap and map out exactly what you have to do from start to finish. If so. It means you are merely a conduit and someone who is carrying out instructions. It means you have no creative abilities on your part, and no skills are needed. Look at the computer on your desk right now. It has amazing processing capabilities. It can calculate faster than you do. It can carry out instructions to the minute as detail. It does not make mistakes when programmed correctly. But what use is all of that? It cannot create anything by itself. It has no volition with all its processing prowess. Even the most powerful supercomputer in the world cannot create an original creation. Do you know that a computer cannot even generate a string of truly and in numbers, because any program written to generate those numbers HAS to be predictable, and will simply result in it doing the same steps to generate the same string of numbers every single time? The computer can thus, at best, only generate what PPERS to be random numbers pseudo randomness. The fact is, you have been given creative faculties which no other beings on earth apart from humans possess, and it is one of God's highest gifts to mankind. You are given the ability to think whatever thoughts you choose, even destructive ones, and also the ability to create whatever you want to create. You are even given the freedom to believe you are stuck. If that what you want to do, that how powerful you are. Deciding what you want to create and put into action is your job. That is your part of the equation. Why would some higher being do that for you? But once you have decided what to do, then I can absolutely promise you that the world conspires to help you get it done. Think back to a time when you committed yourself to doing something. You were firm in your belief, and very sure that it was the right thing to do. No one could talk you out of it or persuade you otherwise. How did that feel? Things just fell into place and happened, didn't they? If you needed an answer, you found it. If you needed some help, you asked for it. If you were rejected, you tried the next door. So how is that situation any different now? If you could do it back then, why not now? W. H. Murray, the great Scottish explorer said, On cerning all acts of initiative and creation there is one elementary truth that the moment one definitely commits oneself then divine providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred and which no man could have dreamed would have come their way. You don't have to take any one word for this. Commit yourself first to doing something today, right now, even shutting this book at this very moment and doing it, if it feels right to you. If the momentum and impulse is strong, do it right now. Then see the signs and signals start coming in to guide you every step along the way. The funny thing is, nowadays I receive so many signs and signals at every turn of my life while a few short years ago, I seemed to receive none. What the difference? I committed first, and the universe moved. Jab number four. What's the worst? One reason why people remain stuck and paralyzed is because of immense fear. They are afraid of the unknown, and afraid of what will happen next. I now know. After many years of applying these principles that as long as I follow my heart, and follow the eins given to me outlined in the previous chapter, I will always be moving along my highest path and therefore safe. But for someone who is stuck, the world seems like a starkly different place, filled with risks, uncertainties and unknowns. Had if I do this and something goes wrong? Had if I make the wrong move? If fear is keeping you from acting, this is a very practical method that I learned and constantly use to deal with fear. Take a piece of paper and write down the action that you are intending to take, 
but have been afraid of taking them below that, write down the worst possible outcome or scenario that can possibly happen. What is the worst that can possibly happen if you made that phone call and asked for some guidance? What is the worst that can happen if you asked for that loan? What is the worst that can possibly happen if you went for that job interview? What is the worst that can possibly happen if you made this investment? What is the worst that can possibly happen if you did this next step? Of course, Many things can possibly happen but I want you to focus on and write down the absolute worst. Your worst nightmare. Write it down on paper right now. Make it something real and tangible for you right now. To give you an example, this is what I have come up with. For the longest time, I was fearful of hiring some external consultants and making some changes to my business. I was uncertain whether it would work, and I didn't want to lose money. I didn't want my business to self-destruct or go off in a completely different direction. I didn't want to be cheated. I didn't want to deal with the headache if something went wrong. All of these totally absurd thoughts were swirling around in my head. But I focused on one, and wrote down the worst that could possibly, logically happen. I would simply lose all my monetary investment if it didn't work. That it, that it. All those absurd doomsday scenarios that were swirling around in my head were simply the result of unclear and muddled thinking. Remember this, anytime you are stuck, you lack clarity. Someone who is clear is never stuck. By writing down the worst possible thing that could logically happen, I separated all that gunk that was going on in my head with the worst possible thing that could realistically happen, which was this. There was a chance I could possibly lose my entire investment. Now came the next question. Am I prepared to bear this consequence? Will something happen to me if it happens? I then asked myself the next question. What is the best possible thing that can happen? Of course the investment would pay off and I would make some pretty good returns. So then the decision making becomes automatic. If the absolute worst happened, I would lose my money but nothing more than that. If the best happened, I would be a much happier person and make many times my investment. Focus on the est and the orst and throw away everything else. They are merely distractors in every situation. Here are the steps again. What is the worst that can possibly happen? Write down the absolute worst case scenario. Your worst nightmare. What is the best that can possibly happen if everything goes right? Am I prepared slash can I handle the worst case scenario? If S go for it. If O shelf the idea or make a small change use jab number 2 plus or minus technique that eliminates this possibility. Jab number 5. Can you use a doormat as a weapon? Here a common theme in one of those martial arts movies. The protagonist is initially defeated time and time again by his opponents. He tries harder and harder but fails. He tries to be faster, to use his weapon better, to apply the moves his master taught him but no matter what he does, the opponent just seems to be one step ahead of him. Then one day, he finally gets it. The light bulb goes off in his head. He finally understands what his master has been trying to teach him since day one. That he needed no weapons to fight in the first place. That he needed no system in the first place. From that moment, he could fight with any object at hand. He didn't need his fists, his sword or a stick. He could pick up any object and turn it into a weapon. Yes, even a doormat or a washing machine. His opponents are swiftly defeated and the tables are turned. People who are tucked think they need to do things in a certain way. They are looking for a certain fixed formula to help them get started. As a result, they are always waiting for guidance on what to do, or reading more books to ensure that they are using the right system. The truth is there is no right system. There is no one path out of stuckness which is why this book gives you 10 jabs, but does not prescribe or dictate that you do any in particular. Each individual situation is unique and different. You can fight with anything, if you eat good enough. You can start with anything, and turn it into your next masterpiece, your next idea by simply making the commitment to. To illustrate this principle, hear how I wrote this chapter. I started with my broader intentions of jabbing you into action, with helping you to get out of the rut you are in right now. Then. I simply pick one object at random, that is in my office right now and of no particular meaning. I pick my doormat. Look, it does and even matter whether the doormat ties in with the principle I am trying to teach you now or not, but I was intent on weaving it into a teachable and applicable principle. I simply gave myself the command, say this doormat and write this chapter with it. And I came up with the analogy of how a skilled martial artist, 
a skilled guru DOES and need any fixed system or weapon to come up with something. I think you all agree a pretty good example. You are the creator of your own life and career or business situation. We already know from previous chapters that you are blessed with creative faculties and the ability to direct your thoughts in any way you want. This includes putting them to good use and to create more and better things in life for the benefit of others. This may be your next project, or moving ahead and getting yourself out of this rut which you are currently in. To achieve this purpose, you can use anything as your crutch. Please do not make the mistake of thinking you have to start with one of those pompous ideas, or write something that sounds intelligent, or do something that looks intelligent. Give all of your preconceived notions of what things should be up. Instead, pick one object, like what I have done earlier it can really be anything, and then ask yourself, how can I use this object to chart my next move? How can I use this object to take my next step? Use the principle from the very first chapter, if I knew what this object can be used for in this situation, what would I do next? And go do it. I use this technique all the time, no matter what I'm creating in my life, and my clients love it because they always find me amazingly creative. Jab number six. Invent your own silly game. Have you ever wondered why grown-ups, intelligent adults spend so much time on Facebook doing something as inconsequential as playing Farmville? Of course, if you play it once in a while for entertainment and relaxation after a hard day of work, it good. But some people spend most of their time, a disproportionate amount of their time playing these games, when they obviously have much better ways to invest their time and could be doing something much more important for you. It may not be playing Farmville. It may be some other routine, mindless activity which you engage in that saps your time and energy. On the surface, this activity may even aim to be beneficial. The mind can conjure up all sorts of reasons why something is good for us just to make us do the same old same old. So we must be careful not to fall into this trap. People play Farmville because it keeps them entertained, but also because it feels good and familiar to them. By playing. They are distracted from the realities of daily life, and from what really needs to be done at hand. If you are stuck and lack clarity, chances are you engaging in one or more of these mind-numbing activities. And numbing is really the perfect word here because it really numbs your mind, and pushes you further into the rut and keeps you there. It's time to be very honest with yourself and take a look at the activities you have been routinely doing over the past week. Have you been doing any activities as a form of distraction? Have you been doing anything to make yourself forget that you are actually wasting your time? Are you doing any activities as a form of escapism? When you are stuck, chances are that most or all of your activities will be escape activities to make yourself forget that you are not doing important things and you will usually do the same things day after day so a DOES and take much analysis to identify these mind-numbing activities that you are engaging in take a piece of paper and write down these activities which you are spending much of your time on as you identify and write these activities Avoid the need to justify why you are doing each of them. Just write them down. They are just what they are. Activities that you have chosen to do and nothing more. Now, take another piece of paper and write down one thing you need to be doing that makes all the difference for you. If you are a painter, you need to be painting. If you are an author, you need to be writing. If you are a salesperson, you need to be making sales calls. Write down that one activity that brings in the money for you or brings in the results for you. Be frank and honest with yourself. You know what this activity is, and what is this particular action you need to be doing in order to move things forward. Every single tech person whom I e asked knows what they have to do on a regular basis, but are just too afraid to acknowledge it. They are too afraid to face the truth of the matter. Of course, you all have certain negative emotions or reactions associated with this activity which is why you e not doing it. The stuck person says, no I should be doing this but I don't think I can do it well or some other excuse. At the end of the day, it always an excuse. For now, I'm not asking for the negative emotions or reasons why you cannot be doing it. Just write down that particular action or actions you need to take. It is usually a repetitive action you all need to take on a regular and consistent basis to produce results in your life. Farmville or any other popular game is nothing more than a series of rules put together. So before playing Farmville or any other game slash sport, all of the players agree to abide by a certain set of rules. The rules are what makes the game fun. Imagine playing a game where anything goes. Needless to say, it will be chaotic and also very boring. You need to set some limits and constraints in order for things to be more interesting, 
because part of the fun is in coming up with ways to work around those limitations. The exact same principle applies here, doing that one single action that makes all the difference, which you are not currently doing at the moment, can be easy and automatic if you will just turn it into a game. You can come up with your own rules for the game and then train your mind to do it. If you think this idea sounds silly, stay with me for a little while longer. Throughout the ages, people have come up with some very silly and arbitrary rules, and then stuck by them and played these little games with themselves. Do you remember the snake game in the early mobile phones? The one where the snake grew longer by one square each time it swallowed some food, and the objective of the game was to get the longest snake without having the snake colliding into itself. It sure sounds stupid I ass in it, now that I have written the objective of the game in plain English but it was great fun. People everywhere were playing snake in trains to waiting rooms to their bedrooms. They played it because the rules made it entertaining for them. Hear the great secret, anything can be made entertaining and fun for you. You can be motivated to do anything. If millions of people around the world can be motivated into thinking that manning a virtual farm or making their snake grow longer is fun and the snake was just a series of squares on a black and white screen then you can make whatever action you wrote above fun for you to do. This is the way I turn anything into a game. I have a calendar on my desk that has a series of squares, one for each day. I use a red sharpie marker and put a big check mark across that day when my answer is asked to this question, did I do my best work today? For example, if I submitted a report, if I wrote a proposal and sent it out, if I got something done that was important and moved me towards my goal, such as writing a chapter of my book I put a red check mark across the square for that day. Then I added a few other completely arbitrary rules. I want to see how many consecutive days I get red check marks. I want to see how long this chain of red check marks is going to last. And I want my chain to be always longer than the previous longest chain. These rules are completely arbitrary, but guess what? They absolutely work. I am now more productive than ever before, and any resistance to doing that extra bit of work before I turn and dissolves. Sometimes I even rush to start and complete a piece of work before the day ends just to get that red check mark across the day. If you think about it, this is strange since no one is really monitoring me. No one outside is really holding me accountable. I am the only one holding myself accountable. Yet I doing it willingly because I have invented a game, a system of arbitrary rules, that make the whole thing fun for me. Are there days where I don't get a red check across the square? Absolutely. There are days in which I go out to enjoy, have fun, and just unwind. But I do so in the absolute certainty and satisfaction of knowing that for every one of those days, I have a long string of red check days. Jab number seven, creating a routine for creation. How would you act if you have total clarity? You would move confidently through your day, from one task to the next, never once stopping to question what you are currently doing. You would not wonder if you are wasting your time, or spending it the right way. You would complete each task at hand in a relaxed yet focused manner in what some call the flow state, and complete your best possible work for that day. In the previous chapter, I explained that I judge the success of my day based on one primary question, did I do my best work today? Not yesterday, not the day before, not for the past week. Those are in the past and the time past can never be recovered. Instead, the question I ask simply focuses on the day that has just passed, did I do my best work today? Given all the constraints of the day, this means taking into consideration all the external demands that have been placed upon me. Maybe a family emergency cropped up, beyond my control, that I had to attend to. Maybe a friend took me out to lunch and I spent a few hours at the appointment. So despite all these unexpected events that happened, did I still do my best work? It is important to create a routine for creation. This means putting in place a sequence of events you will do automatically on a daily basis. The main advantage of having a routine is that it makes things endless and you don't have to engage in mental debate over whether you should do something today, or what should you do first, or what you should do next. Very often, this unnecessary mental debate keeps us stuck, because too much analysis leads to paralysis, when the time can be spent actually doing something productive. Let me give you a simple example. I used to be unable to decide what to drink for breakfast every morning. It sounds almost funny now to talk about it, but we are so powerful that we can create problems out of seemingly nothing. And so I managed to create the situation of not knowing what to drink every morning. Since I was still groggy from just having woken up, being faced with almost a dozen beverage choices from milk, different kinds of tea, 
to the 12 different kinds of coffee my coffee machine can make often made me waste about 5 to 10 minutes each morning pondering this useless question, when I could be getting on with my day and doing something that really mattered. Finally one day I decided, look, I being really silly here, I should just create a team for what I shall drink every moment. This means making the decision in advance. Each Sunday night before I slept, I would decide in advance what to drink for each morning of the week. I would lay out the tea or coffee capsules in a row on my dining room table such that when morning came around, I would simply mindlessly pick up the beverage choice I had left there on Sunday night, and go make it. No more debate over what I hold be drinking this morning, what I feel like drinking this moment, and worrying over whether I am consuming all my beverages evenly. You can see from the above example that life always presents us with lessons and problem-solving opportunities. I happen to find these opportunities fun, as I realize they can be illuminating once we get past the blocks and come away with a lifelong principle that can be learnt. It is the same for your creation work too. When one is stuck, they always lack clarity. A lack of clarity means they spend more time engaging in a mostly useless mental debate on what to do first, or what to do next, or how to spend their time that day when that time can be put to way better use on doing the actual work itself. The way to blast through all this inaction and inertia is simply this, put in place a routine for creation. Almost every single one of the greatest creators, writers, thinkers, Philosophers of our time had a routine for creation. The routine may differ from one artist to the next, but the common denominator is that all of them have some sort of a routine. If you e going to be a great creator, you need a routine too. It makes everything automatic and allows you to blast through blocks of inertia or indecision. Here the routine I have come up with for myself. Feel free to adapt it for your own situation. Of course. I did not just come up with a complete routine one fine day. The routine was fine-tuned over the course of probably one to two weeks, after which it stabilized and I started doing it with not many changes. In the beginning, you'll probably find it necessary to make minor adjustments and changes to your routine, as the kinks are still sorted out. My routine consists of waking up in the morning and having breakfast while reading the newspaper. Next. I get on my stationary exercise bicycle and immediately do 45 minutes of cardio exercise to get my heart pumping and sweating. It makes me feel energetic and sets the mood for the rest of the day. While I on the exercise machine, I am always reading a book on my Kindle, or doing some other form of reading. If there is urgent work reading I have to do, I do it while I on the exercise bike. Otherwise, I'll take that 45 minutes of time to do some positive, uplifting, self-improvement reading. After 45 minutes on the bicycle I get off, and immediately take a shower. I force myself to move fast because if I feel the urge to sit on the couch and just est for a moment, it may just destroy the momentum of the whole morning. So throughout the whole process as I move through my routine, I keep reminding myself of the importance of not breaking that routine. After taking a nice warm shower of about 20 minutes, I immediately sit down at my desk with two giant computer screens and start writing. I write or create ideas for any one of my four separate careers until I am satisfied, then I break for lunch before continuing throughout the day. You notice that I am very clear about exactly what is to be done, at each step of the day. I never stop to ask myself the question, oh what should I be doing now to make the best use of my day? That would be wasting time and breaking the flow. If you are stuck. Chances are you do not have a routine for creation at all. You just drift from one day to the next, doing what catches your eye, or what fancies you at the moment, or engaging in one of those distracting, mind-numbing activities. STOP. Don't let yourself carry on like this anymore. Life is too precious to be lived in such a scattered manner. Starting from tomorrow, put in place a routine for creation for yourself. And as you put yourself through the routine day after day, You'll find that you eventually create the mental habit of sticking to your routine that it will seem normal, and deviating from it will become more and more difficult. Jab number 8, noted with thanks. How to deal with negativity. A common phrase used in business correspondence is, noted with thanks. Very often when I send an email off to someone, the person replies with a short, sweet and succinct message, noted with thanks. These three words are effective, because they show that first, the recipient has read and received whatever you were trying to convey in your message. And second, they are thanking or acknowledging you for the message, so they do not come across as rude in any way. You can use this exact sample principle not only when dealing with email replies, 
but also when dealing with negativities and your negative self-talk. If you have followed the tips in this book so far and started with your routine, started adding one simple thing to your life, or started with the creative process it is almost certain that you will be hit with some pretty negative self-talk, self-criticism, or self-doubt. Remember that this mechanism is there to keep you safe. Without this mechanism, we might just go and do the first thing that comes to us, such as jumping off the cliff. So all these negative self-talk may save our lives under certain circumstances, but it can be a real nuisance when we are trying to create. Because hey, the last thing you want when you are working on something is someone breathing down your neck and telling you that it is not good enough. The self-talk can be particularly intensive especially if you have been stuck for a while. The more inertia you are working against, the more negative self-talk you will face. When you start putting the steps in this book into action and start working on something, I can guarantee that you will be hit with thoughts of negativity and worry. You will question whether you can do it. You will think that nothing you do ever matters. You will doubt your own abilities. You will persuade yourself to play Farmville. The key to getting over this is to first anticipate all these thoughts, and then give up the need to engage them. Give up resisting them. Instead, just allow them to run their course while you are doing your work. How do you handle all these negative thoughts that seem to just crop up within yourself? You use the old email trick. Each time a negative self-talk floats up that tries to convince you to stop working, quietly say to yourself or even out loud noted with thanks and then go back to your work. Do this over and over again. Whatever the negative or insidious thought that comes up, just say to it, noted with thanks. This tells yourself that you have acknowledged it that you are aware of it and then go right back to work. Let the negative self-talk continue if it wants to, but make it clear to yourself that you are also going to keep doing your best work, given all the constraints right now. Most people are doing the wrong thing. They are trying to totally silence the inner critic. The problem is that when you have been inactive or stuck for a while, or if you have been critical of yourself all your life the inner critic can be difficult and almost impossible to silence. It has been there all your life and it has become a part of you that you identify with. It like an old friend who feels comfortable and familiar to you, and on a deeper level, people need it to ensure that they are doing the right thing. Of course in many cases, it is way more of a hindrance than a help. So instead of telling your inner critic to scoot off which you can let it know that you are acknowledging its criticisms if thanks and then get back to your work. What you will find is that you will become outrageously productive. You will do your best work and your inner critic will speak less and less. Eventually it will shut up, and in my case, my inner voice now comes up with ideas and gives me advice about how to do things better. The same voice that was filled with negativity and doubt now tells me how to do things better, and gives me constructive suggestions. All these are of course, aspects of my own self. And this is a process that the mind uses to communicate with us. But recognize that if you are to do consistent work, you need to handle the inner critic by telling it ordered with thanks, instead of getting swayed by it. These jabs as bullets. A person who is stuck is someone who lacks clarity. Someone who is clear is never stuck, because he slash she always knows intuitively what to do next. He is not wasting time figuring out what to do next, or deciding what to do next, or worrying about how things will turn out. These are the series of jabs delivered in this book. Remember, you don't need any permission from anyone else to get started. Just take any one of them and run with it. Each time it appears you are tuck read through this list. As a powerful human being with creative faculties, you can never be truly tuck. You can however, create the illusion that you are stuck and continue to perpetuate it. Just as energy is constantly moving in a random manner, nothing remains totally stationary. The same is true with your creative work and life. Your job is to create meaning and structure out of the randomness. How you do it is entirely up to you. The key to getting unstuck is not to have more ideas. You already have all the wonderful ideas you need. They are all within you. Stop looking to external sources for ideas, and stop expecting others to generate ideas for you. You don't need more ideas. You just need to take some action. What would you do if you had totally clarity? Just make it up. Everything is made up anyway, and meaning is added later. What would you create if you knew what to create? Get yourself into the energy of the creator and then go do that. You are a natural. You are a born creator. Any stuckness or limitations are only self-perceived. What is one thing you can easily add to your life right now that will immediately get you moving? Not a dozen things or even three things. Just focus on one simple activity you can immediately start doing now, that will move your life in the direction you want. Is this one simple activity something you can do easily, 
without much effort or strain. If it is too strenuous, ditch it and find another one. Keep looking until you find a simple activity you can easily do to improve your life. Maybe your life is filled with too much clutter and distractions right now. What is one simple activity or action you can remove from your life right now? Can this activity be easily eliminated or removed? Work until you find something that is easy to remove and will improve your immediate situation. Are you sitting around waiting for guidance? or waiting for signs and signals. The universe DOES and give you signs and signals until you commit yourself through intention and movement. The universe does not and will not take over your job as a creator. Your job is to decide what you want to create in your own life or work, and only you can do this for yourself. A computer with all its computing prowess cannot create even an original thing for itself. This is what makes you different and unique. What is the worst possible thing that can happen if you take action? Are you prepared slash willing to bear these consequences? Often you will find that it is no big deal and not as scary as you thought it would be. Write your thoughts down to sort them out and don't let them swirl in your head. If you are drowning in a pool of confused thoughts, ideas and feeling overwhelmed by them, write them down one by one and cross out the unnecessary ones. What is the best possible thing that can happen if you took action? Are you willing to risk the worst happening, to allow the chance of the best happening? If so, Go do it right now. Can you use a doormat as a weapon? Give up any preconceived notions of what you need to do your best work. Remember that the best fighters can fight with anything. They simply improvise with whatever comes along their way. When I am determined to write, I can write anywhere, even in my head and then just simply copy those words onto paper later on. Give up the need to make excuses. Tell yourself, if I am clever enough to make excuses, I am not stuck. Are you spending too much time deciding or agonizing over what to do next? Eliminate all of that wasted time by deciding in advance what to do. Put in place a fixed routine for creation. Go through that routine almost every day. It will become a habit, just as getting stuck is also a habit. Make your own game out of doing your best work. Remember that games are nothing more than arbitrary rules thrown together. Your mind loves a challenge and it will play any game you invent for yourself. Get a desk calendar. At the end of each day, ask yourself this question, have I done my best work today, given the constraints? If the answer is an honest yes, put a check mark across the date. See how many consecutive check marks you can get. Try to get the longest possible chain of red check marks. The key to dealing with negative self-talk and discouraging thoughts is not to stop whatever you eat doing and to fight them. Instead, look at these thoughts in their face. Each time they pop up and say, noted with thanks. You may have to do it more than once though. Keep saying noted with thanks to your negative, self-defeating thoughts and keep doing your work. Very soon, the frequency of these thoughts will diminish and you may even find your inner critic turning into your biggest fan. Thank you. I hope this short book jolted you and gave you some ideas to get started. I would really appreciate it if you can take a few moments to review this book on Amazon.com and let other readers know how this book has helped you. Hopefully, this will allow other readers in the same situation to get unstuck too. As you know, getting stuck sucks. Thank you. Other books by Richard Dots. Ban Mind Control Secrets Is it really possible to control and condition your own thoughts to get what you want? This principle was believed to be so powerful it was banned by governments in the US and the UK. Ban Manifestation Secrets How did the ancient spiritual masters create whatever they wanted in life and seemingly work miracles? The Magic Path of Intuition with Florence Scovulsion in this hybrid edition of the lost 1936 manuscript, I interpret and explain these teachings of the great new thought author in a modern light.